What's going on, everybody? Jeff here. Welcome back to the channel. End of a two-day rally after Friday's heavy sell-off. Today, we have our first big corporation reporting earnings, Netflix. Now, let me tell you a couple things about this earnings season, which I think is going to be very similar to last quarter, okay? Either we are going to see companies still having a, a hard time adjusting their future outlook and and projected revenue over the next six to 12 months, which could leave more room to the downside, or it's going to be something along the lines of where, listen, bad news just really isn't that bad. We saw that happening a little bit in quarter two. Now, if you remember where we were a year ago during earnings season, if companies were not reporting rock solid revenue, rock solid growth, an amazing outlook in the future after their stock had rallied so much, okay, over the past two years since March of 2020, analysts and investors would really punish the stock for that. And we saw that slowly flip. And last quarter, I'm telling you, every single company that really reported kind of bleak earnings, they really looked at it as like, listen, you know, bad really isn't that bad. The market was already down 15 to 20%. Now, here we are, we could line up for a very similar, okay, circumstance as last quarter. Like I said, let the charts show you, let the reaction show you. Netflix is set to report in probably less than 20 minutes as I'm making this video. I'm not making any pred predictions, okay, or trying to guess. I will tell you the Netflix put side is crowded. I hope it pays off for most of you guys. But as you know, there's always a tendency where it can rip to the other side. Now, let's get into what I want to talk about today. It is very important. News came out just a few days ago, and I want to cover it, especially because... The United States is going to first report their initial estimates in just a few weeks, okay? So as you can see, we've really been basing, okay, this is the SPY. We've really been basing over the past few weeks. We broke out to the downside only to get, you know, th th that fake out rip right back up to the upside above this level to kind of get brought right back into this channel. We finally broke out of it over the weekend. Yesterday was a beautiful trend to the upside. We kind of hitting that 375 level of resistance and kind of just chopping intraday as we are waiting, like I said, the first big corporation to report their earnings. Now, bank or earnings that are pretty much in the books for this quarter, okay? Some of them had beat their estimates, you know, better than revenue. However, their investment side has taken a hit, obviously, because the market has began to pull back, okay? So over a longer, time frame like i say guys we are really just still channeling in between this area we really got to get below three 356 on the spy or above that 380 before we can potentially get another multi-day multi-week trend where we can really ride it just like we had okay after the cpi was released on the 13th all the way down until we finally got out of that area on the 3rd of october a nice solid trend we can swing some trades kind of just take a little break from that heavy volatility. VIX is still holding over 30. But let's talk about the next couple of weeks because this is really the next big data that is going to be released. So this article came out very recently and I think investors are kind of having a hard time digesting it. I just want to go over the key points, kind of talk about potentially why China would do that. But here's as the article states, China delays indefinitely the release of GDP and other economic statistics. The unusual move comes as the country's ruling elite have gathered in Beijing for a twice a decade National Congress of the Communist Party, which that could very well be a reason. However, a couple things that analysts have expected. One, they said it's highly unusual for this to happen. Okay. And the report drew speculation that the data might have been worse than officials expected. OK, so China has been a little bit stricter when it comes to the United States and lockdowns all right, when, uh, for the covid variants. And like I said, that has affected them a little bit differently. OK, they also haven't pumped as much stimulus as the United States. All right. So that they're battling inflation is a little bit different to where we are. OK, uh, however, the Western economists have been predicting that China would announce that the economy grew a little more than 3% in the in the third quarter compared with last year. So like I said, a very big difference. But the reason why it's relevant to us is not only the global economy that is having a very big you know, impact, but here we are on October 27th, we are going to have our third quarter advance estimate GDP. Now, we've got two quarters of negative GDP, okay? Two quarters of negative growth. Now, before 2022, that would have signal, 
a recession. All right. And there's been a lot of talks over the past three months, and it's really beginning to accelerate with inflation just not being able to come down. Okay. You've got, you know, a lot of families that are struggling right now. You know, credit card utilization is, you know, back up almost at its all time highs. All right. Ahead of, you know, the pre pandemic, we've battled that whole recession. Okay. If a third quarter comes in negative, I really don't see how they're going to be able to continue to knock this off, even with unemployment very low. There's a huge caveat to that low unemployment. You have a lot of individuals that were potentially ready to retire this year or next year, and reports are saying that they're having to delay that, okay? They're having to delay that, meaning, meaning less jobs available, but the labor market is still very, very strong, and they're still in need of individuals, okay? So you have that data that, that's you know being really construed, but like I said, we get a third quarter of negative growth that's going to impact, okay, the entire, not only the entire economy and everybody obviously here, but also the stock market. Investors are going to be watching this very closely ahead of midterms, okay? Now we're gonna talk about midterms a little bit later on, we still do have a, a few weeks, uh, you know, ahead of midterms. I want to, I'm, I will mention to everybody what happens, okay, when you know, if the if the House and the Senate flip over, all right, and and kind of you know go back and and talk about you know recent times during this happens, how the market reacts and so forth, what sectors to look at. We'll get hit to the upside, okay, and obviously you know uh, hit to the downside. And we'll talk a little bit about that, but this one is going to be very important. And like I said, China delaying that. Investors are having a hard time digest this, even though we are still really just basing in this channel. Okay. So last thing I want to talk about, which I feel like a lot of people haven't been, is the bond market. And it's something that I never really focused on too heavily. All right. It was a little bit obviously slower pace. I am, you know, still in my 30s. All right. So when it talks about switching over my 401ks and my Roth IRAs over to the safer haven of bonds, it's something that I'm just really aggressively going to continue adding to, you know, every quarter. All right. And obviously when I, you know, the market generally tends to move to the upside and I still have plenty of years before I'll even be eligible to be able to withdraw from that. So it's never really been my concern, but I put a lot more focus on this over the past few months as I've just really heard a lot of people who look at the bond market very close, closely, kind of screaming, and, and you're seeing the buffers of the bond market is much bigger than the stock market. All right, and this 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 uh, you know title and and first line really says it all. Week by week, the bond market crash just keeps getting worse, and there's no clear end in sight. Here's where you have something happening that is very unique. Okay, so generally when the stock market sells off, it begins you know to enter a bear market territory, bonds do better. Bonds are known as their safe haven. Okay, they all say that, listen, you, you know, as you get older, you should be slowly getting out of your, you know, riskier, uh, you know, assets such as equities and obviously high risk stocks for your retirement, you know, portfolio and switch it over to bonds. All right, there's a little bit less reward, but it's much bigger, like I just said earlier, a safe haven. You have both of these markets just really tumbling down. Janet Yellen even posted a, a an article, uh, there was an article posted from what Janet Yellen had spoken just recently, and I think I even put it in one of my videos saying, the bond market is struggling for liquidity. You have both of these markets just really under a lot of pressure, okay? And there was a headline I saw earlier. I wish, I, I'm just thinking of it right now. I wish I could pull it up for you. It says, listen, there's always that hidden leverage, that one thing that people didn't have their eyes on that was over leveraged that is going to really pull down this market. In 2008, it was mortgage-backed securities, okay? It was completely over leveraged. Nobody was focused on it, obviously, besides Michael Beery. And that's what really pulled down the market. So this is something to watch. I'm going to continue to monitor. I wanted to mention to you guys, I've talked about, like I said, you know, bonds just a little bit as I've really just began to focus more of my attention when you, when you, when you, when I look at, you know, you know, article writers and other individuals that are very keen on this market that are really banging their hands on the table. It really draws, you know, that better attention. But when it comes to the entire market, like I said, I know I'm, I'm not covering anything uh, on the future side right now, but you want to get over that 380 on SPY to confirm a little bit of trend to the upside. And we really need to break again below that 356 and hold or else we're just going to continue to chop with VIX as high as it is over 30. If you're playing options, all of your option premiums are very high. There was a few small caps that have been running as of recently. But like I said, that high growth speculative category really just isn't as attractive as of right now, you know, lately. But guys, that's it for this video. I'll see you in the next one.